Okay, so this is P2 that you see right now. This is what it's happening in a nearby flag called the park. So we look for areas nearby that most resemble the moon, so that when we do the operator testing, it's realistic as much as we can. Now, in order, what goes into it is you do a lot of analysis and design. In this particular instance, this stream, we talk about how we're uh, developing our wheels. The first wheels were solid aluminum, and you kind of carve out the aluminum to make the wheels, and you test them in using gravity offset. The gravity on the moon is about one sixth of the Earth. So you take, and you take, and you lift it up a little bit to get the same type of pressure. Uh, the other thing you have to test is how do you get off the ladder? You don't know if you're going to land on the rock. So one side might be more safe than another side. And so you turn in place to find the place to get off. Other things are some of the components that go into it. These are some batteries. Now, one interesting thing that most people don't know about the moon, here on Earth, we're on a 24-hour cycle. You get roughly 12 hours of sun, 12 hours of night. Of course, it varies depending on the season because we're off axis. The moon, however, is on a much longer cycle. So one moon day is actually 28 Earth days. So you get 14 days of sun followed by 14 days of night. Now, one of the misnomers people hear about, and I blame some artists that won't be named, is the dark side of the moon. There is no dark side of the moon. It's only the far side of the moon. What's interesting about the moon is it's locked in step with us, so we're always seeing the exact same side of it. But on reality, if you're standing on the moon, the sun rises and sets no matter where you are. Now, once the sun rises, it starts getting extremely hot, so well above boiling temperature. So everything uh, in the line of sight from the sun starts cooking and get really hot. Everything from the solar panel to the, the soil itself starts becoming like an oven, you would imagine. And so you have to design it thermally for all these things to do that right here, electronic cool. Now, the main thing is, as soon as the sun sets, it goes down to liquid nitrogen. And so that thermal gradient destroys, or will likely destroy the robot. But we are going to try to shoot to survive the lunar night. And we're going to do that by getting, creating technologies that could kind of make it a little bit safer and uh, slow down that thermal gradient. Uh, let's see, I'm going to skip a little bit here. Um, this just moves, you can take a look at it later. Uh, some things that go into is a lot of composite work. One thing that we, based off the rocket we're choosing, is we have to keep the mass extremely low, weight really, really low. So every single ounce matters. And so we've been doing things such as making composites of different parts. Everything from uh, the main structural body pieces to the wheels themselves get every single ounce we can. Uh, we test all this in a vacuum chamber that we actually picked up on eBay, of all places. Um, and this kind of shows some of the development. This is the original P1 rover. It kind of looks like a McDonald's Happy Meal. Uh, it's now evolved to P2 that you see right now. This one's been testing for almost a year now. And the next generation is P3, which now is really looking hard at the thermal issues we have to deal with. And so, uh, at Solar Panel 1 Star, kind of act like a, a sailing boat. We kind of always keep in the wind, keep going forward no matter which direction you want to go. <laughs> uh, this is the rocket we'll take this to Athena 2, it gives you some scale. It's not a very big rocket, but what's great about it, it actually did a moon mission before. So it did Lunar Prospector back in about the uh, late 90s, and uh, went to the moon and uh, put a satellite in orbit. So we, they've done this mission before, and uh, we expect to be able to take advantage of all the, the groundwork they did to reduce our cost. Of course, it's posted here if you want to buy it. But let me take you to the last poster here. This is a little bit like a... It can be one long YouTube video. <laughs> we'll come up with better names. We're normally going to all red rovers. Uh, the batteries that go into it, some of the mobility systems. One interesting thing is we actually have only two motors to drive this robot, one on each side. And we have a chain drive that goes to 
each of the wheels. And we do that for many reasons, but one of the reasons is to kind of keep these motors in as best of the temperature as possible. If they're right in the hub, I told you earlier that the ground's baking like an oven, right? So you want to kind of keep your motors away from that hot temperature so they could operate in a much more efficient manner. So uh, with that, uh, any questions, any uh, discussion? How do you lubricate it? Uh, very carefully. Uh, <laughs> uh, one of the things that they discovered during Apollo is some special lubricants that work in these extreme temperatures. Uh, some of them are graphite, some of them are other types of non-traditional lubricants. <laughs> Alright, well let's see, I'll, I'll take you around to the last spot, but uh, feel free to ask myself. What kind, what kind of port are these? Uh, these are uh, brushless motors, brushless DC yeah, motors. Brush motors don't work very well in the space in the vacuum. So the, uh, because they brush this, they get some circuits, like circuits? Like yes, we have some control. And how, how it uh, tolerates the temperature? Say that again? How it tolerates the deep temperature? No, the, the temperature comes from the... the I know, like... But the, how do we get rid of the heat from the motor? Uh, we have a thermal coupling. Take it are you working on the uh, yes. radio okay. surface, uh, which is directly facing So, are there any, We're I'm guessing there's no plans to take it back once it's there, once it's at the moon? Correct. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Probably not, okay. It'd hey. be really expensive and rather pointless. Yeah, okay. I well, we could get data, and I mean, from, a, from that perspective, it would be more worthwhile actually just digging a hole and transporting all the lunar regolith and or rocks back. Oh, okay, yeah. Because that would probably be more valuable than sending the robot back. Oh, okay. Hmm. Well, you don't find I hear you. I knew if I said it long enough, it would be long. That would be great.